Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving an exponential equation. We have e to the power 1 plus ix equals i and we're going to be solving for x. Let's see how we can solve this problem using complex exponentiation. So we're gonna start by writing i in polar form. As you should know, i can be written as 0 plus 1i, in other words 0 comma 1 basically represents i on the argon plane so it's just going to appear here and this is going to be our imaginary axis this is going to be our real axis so on and so forth now the distance from 0 is defined as the modulus or the absolute value in this case that happens to be 1 and another variable we need to worry about is the argument which is denoted by theta and that will be pi over 2 radians. So in other words, I can be written as e to the power i times pi over 2. In general, a complex number can be written as r times e to the power i theta, where r is the modulus or the absolute value, and theta is the argument. Now, let's go ahead and see how we can use this information to solve for x. Now on the left hand side, we have e to the power 1 plus i x. And on the right hand side, we have e to the power i pi over 2. But here's the thing. If you just use pi over 2 as your argument, that's just going to be the principal argument. And later on, when we look at the results from Wolfram Alpha, we're going to talk about this one more time. But we have to consider all the cases, right, to be able to find all solutions, because there are probably, right, maybe, infinitely many solutions. Let's find out. So we have pi over 2 as our argument, but we can add 2 pi to it because two, adding 2 pi would basically bring us to the same point. We would just make an extra rotation and you can keep doing it. You can even do it in the negative direction, right? Which is the clockwise direction. So instead of pi over 2, we can write this angle then as 2 pi n, where n is an integer. I know some folks are thinking about the parentheses. I'm about to put them here. Okay. The angle needs to be multiplied by i, the whole thing, right? Cool. Now, we kind of have like an equation, don't we? Let's go ahead and kind of ln both sides, just pretend, or just set the exponents equal to each other. 1 plus ix equals i times pi over 2 plus 2 pi n. By the way, this would be a good question, right? Is there a case where e to the power something equals e to the power something else, but they're not equal? Obviously, we have that period thing where you're allowed to add uh, some number to it. Uh, but in this case, you know, we don't have to worry about it because we already added 2 pi n. So in other words, when you break it down, I can kind of show you real quick. If you kind of break this down and write it as e to the power i pi over 2 times e to the power i 2 pi n i, I'll probably write it that way. Then this just represents one in the complex world. Remember, we use this idea in other problems. When we try to complexify one, we wrote it as e to the power two pi ni. But is there any case where this doesn't imply z equals w, right? Something to think about. Anyways, so from this equation, let's go ahead and try to solve for i. To be able to do that, we're gonna first subtract one, right? If you subtract one from both sides, you're gonna get this. And then of course, to solve for x, you can divide by i. Uh, or you can multiply by negative i. Same idea, because i and negative i are reciprocals. Did you know that? Wait, aren't they conjugates? Maybe it's both, right? So let's multiply by negative i. That's gonna give us what we want. Negative i, negative i. And when you multiply by negative i, of course, you have to multiply the whole thing. Be careful about that. Not just the i, but the whole thing. And negative i times i is negative i squared. And hopefully you remember that i squared is negative 1. So the negative i squared is positive 1. Therefore, we don't have to worry about this. This is just 1 in the complex world. Another way to write 1. And now we end up with x. Let's go ahead and simplify by distributing the negative i. So x becomes i times negative i, again, that becomes negative i squared, which is 1, so don't worry about it. And that's why I wrote this first, because I knew that it was going to be the real part, right? Well, pi over 2 plus 2 pi n, and then negative i multiplied by negative 1 is just going to be 
plus i. Hmm, interesting. Well, maybe uh, this is going to be the real part then, right? Pi over 2 plus 2 pi n, but n is an integer, so we have infinitely many values or infinitely many solutions for this. But the imaginary part is just i. And we can definitely go ahead and check our work, but let's go ahead and look at the special case first. What if n is equal to 0? Then we get x equals pi over 2 plus i. And since pi over 2 is about 3.14, this can be written basically as 3.14 something plus i. So we were able to write the solution, one of the solutions at least, right, in the form of a plus bi, which is the name of this channel, right? You hopefully know that. So it's in standard form. Great. Now let's go ahead and plug it into the original equation to see if it really, really satisfies the equation. So we're going to do this e to the power 1 plus i x. And now I'm going to replace x with this particular value. But trust me, you can use any value you want and it should work, right? Pi over 2 plus i will replace x. And then what we're going to do, we're going to distribute. Use the distributive property. 1 plus i times pi over 2. And then i times i is just going to be i squared. So you're going to write it as plus i squared or just minus 1. Aha. Uh -huh. Isn't that great? 1 cancels out. Beautiful. And when 1 cancels out, we end up with e to the power i times pi over 2. And as you will remember from Euler's formula or the polar form or whatever you want to call this, but definitely mention Euler because he is one of the greatest, in my opinion, the greatest mathematician. Um, anyways, this can be written as follows. Cosine of pi over 2 plus i times sine of pi over 2. And what is the general formula? The general formula is e to the power i theta equals cosine of theta plus i times sine of theta. Let me, say, let me tell you something crazy. Theta doesn't have to be a real number. Theta can be a complex number, and this is still true. So we can talk about something like what is the cosine of a plus bi, right? And it's going to be pretty interesting. And obviously, it's just another complex number, right? If you cosine a complex number, what do you expect to get? A real number? Okay, this is going to be a good question then, right? Can you cosine a complex number and get a real number? Of course, what I mean by complex is a non-real complex. Make sense? Okay, uh, go ahead and explore that and then please let us know how that goes. But that's basically shows us, because cosine pi over 2 is equal to, wait a minute, we didn't check this. What is cosine pi over 2? Mm, unit circle, let's go ahead and draw that real quick. Cosine at pi over 2 is 0, so this is 0, this is 1, and yes, this is i, finally. Great, so our solution worked, and that's only one of the solutions, but again, you can check. And let's go ahead and take a look at Wolfram Alpha. Wolfram Alpha gives us the following. Oh, great, I was expecting to just see the, uh, what is it called, the principal value, but it does show all the values. It just wrote it a little differently. I don't know why, but if you distribute the one half, you're going to get the same thing. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time in another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.